Hey guys, Ron here, and we've made all sorts of Pokemon from my region of Sone, like starters, legendaries, pseudo-legendaries, and tons more. And I want to continue and finish making Pokemon that are part of important groups. Recently I made fossils, early root bugs, birds, and normal types, and I want to fill in some gaps, particularly a few of the missing fairy types. I'm going to tackle a feminine family akin to Gardevoir, Gothitelle, Tsarina, and Hatterene, then I'm going to make a regional form and top it all off with a cool looking single stage fairy type Pokemon. Let's do it! The first Pokemon I want to make today is a full family based on grapes. Now I've always been a fan of the idea of fruit based Pokemon and have always wondered why there isn't a grape Pokemon. It's such an iconic fruit and is very versatile and a huge part of human history. The Middle East is generally described as the homeland of grapes and the cultivation of the plant started there like many thousand years ago. Now we can make a Pokemon that uses all the facets of grapes like the vines and tendrils or the juice and fermentation. So I'm going to make a tiny little Grapemon that has a tendril and leaf and uses its vine to maneuver around. It'll evolve into a feminine little fairy type that uh, has grapes and that will evolve into a final evil that will be the grape woman that maneuvers around with these like long vine hands and shoots grape bombs. The aesthetic of the two evolved forms will be based on the various traditional Turkish clothing, baggy trousers, loose jackets, and sometimes these coin necklaces uh, with the grapes replacing those necklaces. Uh, so let's begin! So the first stage will be a single grape with a tendril on its head, tiny body and legs. By now, if you're a real one, you may notice that this Pokemon is actually Tindril, a Pokemon I made years ago for a real or fake Pokemon challenge with Natani. I'm reusing the design and finally making an entire family for it. I'm giving it a grape leaf, added more points to make it look more accurate, but also like a hand with five fingers, since it can control its leaf like a hand. Finishing up the proportions and sketch work, some saturated greens and grape purple eyes before toning down the colors. Take a look at Tindril, the Tendril Pokemon, from the word tiny and tendril. It's a pure grass type and pure female. Tindril uses its vine to climb plants and swings to maneuver. They're in search for high spots to absorb the sun's rays. Inside them is an unripe fruit with the potential to be sweet or poisonous. It's currently bitter and Tindril will shoot out bitter juice at its enemies as a deterrent. Their prehensile leaf allows them to grab objects and branches. They are enamored with celebration. They love watching other Pokemon and humans having fun and mimicking festivities with other Tindril by interlocking their vines and dancing in a circle. Here's the shiny. Guys, I'm gonna have to be frank with you. This is the cutest Pokemon I've ever drawn. It's one of my favorites, honestly. I hope you guys appreciate my child as well. It was also a blast revisiting a previous design I made way before the channel had this series. So let me know which other old designs of mine should be part of a zone. This next one's tough. The mission is to make a teenage plant girl like Steeny. I'm giving it a grape tiara and vine princess Leia buns, grape necklace and grape leaf dress. I thought the buns made it look too European, so I gave it vine curls instead. Dainty arms and cute face, but I gotta say this doesn't work for me. The concept is fine, but the execution is too basic. In this next version, I'm giving it pigtail vines to make it look more traditional. I thought these leaf bangs would uh, help fill the face up, but this is kinda messy. I think in the next version, to make it more cohesive, I should define its personality with a pose. I'm gonna make it outgoing and sassy. We know for sure we want a feminine figure and grape tiara, and this is when it all went right. This pose really asks for a ponytail. This Pokemon is young and active, and this vine ponytail seems like a natural next step from Tindril's vine. The grape necklace and leaf dress was already a no-brainer, so the final step was to find ways to fill the sides of the face. Leaf hair in this fashion was fine, but it didn't look like it connected with the ponytail. I think this style works better and gives us an excuse for another curl. Finishing up the dress with an apron-like pattern, purple grapes, colors from Tindril, and then just the matter of what configuration and pattern felt right. At level 18, Tindril evolves into Vitendril, from Vitis, the genus for grapes, Tender, and Tendril, a grass and fairy type. Vitendril are very lively and jubilant. They love to facilitate celebrations and will dole out the juice of their fruit to all, in order to energize people and Pokemon. Since the dawn of the Asone region, this Pokemon has helped its citizens cultivate berries for consumption. In battle, it can use its fruit as weapons. It'll hang from trees using its vine ponytail and will throw dense fruit bombs at its opponents that explode and cover its foe in sticky juice. On the ground, it can use its ponytail as an appendage, dishing out spring-like barrages. It'll heal those that learn their lesson. When they hit a certain age, their juice can be used as a numbing agent. Here's their shiny. They can learn a new move called a Grape Bomb, an 80 base power physical grass move that uh, lowers the opponent's speed. It's crazy seeing an evolution to a Pokemon I made many years ago. Originally, its evolution was very masculine and menacing, but I'm very glad I went in this direction. It's definitely the prettiest Pokemon I've ever made. 
I would love to train one. Now the final evolution is going to be extra hard, because we want to make it beautiful but not borrow too much from the female form. It should still look like a Pokemon. The basic configuration is there from the beginning, uh, the vine bun on the head, grape crown, entire grape necklace, and these leaves on the side of the face that act like hair, but also a veil or head covering. The arms are going to be long vines that extend. This is the tindril evolution I've been wanting to make for years. I think the pose will determine the direction of this design. I'm giving it these traditional baggy trousers made of uh, leaves. Dresses are very common among magic feminine Pokemon, so this helps it stand out. I decided to give it a hands on the hip kind of pose, uh, defining the hair and crown, finishing up the leaf trousers, and finalizing the pose. The same colors as before, but I thought I would introduce some red to make the transition of colors in the on the arms more interesting and give flair to the trousers. Why can't I say trousers correctly? Now it looks festive, fierce, and in charge. A very natural evolution from start to finish. At level 38, Vitendril evolves into Vividus from Vivid, Vine, Vividus, and Empress. Vividus can now produce intoxicating juices that it disperses in order to disorient and knock out its opponents. It is a natural dancer. It dances to heal, but while fighting it moves with grace. It will extend its vines to maneuver through all dimensions of the battlefield. Its spring-like arms can punch at incredible speeds. It's also impossible to escape the arms of Vividus. If its opponents are not in grabbing range, Vividus will aim for their heads with a grape bomb. The older they become, the more beautiful they look. Here's their shiny. They have the ability Leaf Guard and Regenerator with the hidden ability Harvest. It learns the signature move, Grape Acid. It has 100% accuracy, but can either badly poison the opponent or put it to sleep. The final evolution was gonna naturally use fermented grapes as a weapon. I hope this enchanting history of grapes justifies the fairy typing, and I hope you find this Pokemon beautiful and appreciate its aesthetic origins. I rarely make feminine Pokemon because it's tough to make them believable as pocket monsters, but I hope I succeeded. The Vitus looks like it can be an ace on any party. Before I begin, I do want to remind you guys that while I am going to use my own money to get extra art and stuff for this region, all the income that will come from Patreon and YouTube memberships will go into getting all the extra cool stuff that will make the Asone region videos um, better. So consider becoming a patron or channel member if you want to make this series as good as it can be. Now a while back I made an Ice Fairy Luxray that can see Aura instead of possessing X-ray vision. It lives in the cold mountains of northern Asone, and of course, you're going to be able to find Luxio there too. So since I needed art for the Asonian Luxio, I thought I might as well make it in this video uh, before moving on to a completely new line. The process won't show you anything that a Sonian Luxray won't show you, so it's going to be brief. The point is to make it look even more like a Lynx, ice crystal-like spots, and here is a Sonian Luxio, an ice and fairy type. It can crystallize the air around it and form sharp ice claws to slash its enemies. While it can't sense the aura within others like a Sonian Luxray, it can control the aura that emanates from it and will rest its body on others to communicate with rhythmic pulses of aura from its whiskers. Their ears can pick up the signals of other Luxio, allowing them to aid those who have split from the pack. Luxio join their tails together to create large snowstorms that prevent others from entering their territories and blind their prey. Here's their shiny. I mean, most of the info in this line was in the second type swap video, so I highly recommend you check that out to see Asonian Luxray, because its lore and origins are very interesting. The art of this came out amazing, so it looks incredibly official. Now, Asonian Pokemon aren't only going to take inspiration from plants and animals that you can find in the Middle East. How about Pokemon that are based on myths and legends? Now, in Iran, Turkey, and Iraq, there is a mythological creature in folklore called the Shamaran, or King of the Snakes. This half-woman, half-snake is found in a cave, and in the tale, she falls in love with a man named Kamasp who gets stuck in her lair. She teaches the man about medicine, and many years after the man escapes the cave, the Sultan of Tarsus falls ill, and the vizier discovers that the flesh of the Shaman can heal him. Kamasp reveals her location, and the vizier drinks her extract and dies while the Sultan uh, eats her flesh and lives. And Kamasp inherits Shamaran's uh, wisdom and becomes a doctor. So you know how multiple regions have their version of Chansey? You know, a, a benevolent Pokemon that helps out and aids nurses in the Pokemon Center? So I want to make my Asonian equivalent of that. This cute Pokemon with two heads. One side heals, while the other side poisons. A fairy poison type. The beginning was easy since all I have to do was uh, make uh, two snakes combined at the stomach. The poisonous head is a relatively basic snake head, but I want to make sure that it looks like it's uh, always vigilant and protective of the other head. It'll look more like a viper, while the feminine half will look more like a cobra. That way, the hood can look like uh, long hair. Right now, it's just, it's just a cute face, but it looks too much like a human. In the myth, both heads have ornate uh, headdresses, so I'm gonna turn that into horns. 
Soon after that, I got some uh, doubts. It looks too cliche. I experimented with a more animalistic face, but that strips it of the human origin. So a flatter face it is. For a while, I was leaning towards this cat-like face and the horns were back. I put some on the other head so that every trait possible could match between the two halves. I gave it a more human-like face and made the eyes more animalistic to combine both extremes. I made the hair more complicated, almost like a headdress itself some jewelry that is actually scales filled with a magic potion. The headdress hair became more Egyptian looking and it worked so I kept it even though it's not an Egyptian myth. Now I'm finishing off with more tear shaped scales and crescent patterns. I decided to make these teardrop shaped scales uh, look more like a charm that wards off the evil eye, very common in the Middle East. Almost a pastel like color scheme to once again show that this isn't evil or anything, soft palette, but uh, I made it more uh, saturated so it still feels imposing. Behold, Madama from Madam and Ma, the jaws or throat of a beast. It's the fairy poison type known as the split Pokemon. This Pokemon is actually two linked sisters that care deeply for one another. One side prefers solitude, is very distrustful and uh, protective of its sister. It produces a harmful poison and will bite those that will hurt its sister. The other side is very compassionate, social and trustful. It produces a healing nectar that is indistinguishable to its uh, other half's poison. So it's wise to only accept a drink from this Pokemon if you've witnessed the compassionate sister produce it. The healing sister's nectar is the only antidote for the other sister's poison. If both sides come to an agreement, they will teach a trusted human in the ways of medicine and healing. Manama have passed down the knowledge of potions since ancient times. It is said that potions that heal Pokemon HPs were first created with Manama's healing nectar. They have kept themselves hidden in the caves of Asone so they're not forced to aid in the conquest of evil men. Here's their shiny. They have the abilities Healer and Shed Skin with the hidden ability Contrary. I hope I nailed this sort of concept. It's it's incredibly fantastical and is part of this uh, mythical formula that most Pokemon aren't part of. It was also tough to make a Pokemon based on a woman, trying to find the balance between femininity and monsters so it doesn't look like a straight up human, but still not too beast-like. Funny how the other snake Pokemon from Asone, Menhis, also has two sides to it, kind of like having four different snake Pokemon in Asone, but then again, there are more than a few snakes in the Middle East. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. Make sure to check out the previous art video and let me know which animal or concept you'd like to see in the Asone region. Consider becoming a patron or clicking the join button to get cool rewards like seeing videos days early and a huge discount on t-shirts I made for you guys. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I will post the full art of these Pokemon and uh, bye!